Hey guys! In this video I'll show you the synthesis and combustion of cyanogen in azanated oxygen. The combustion of such a mixture exceeds uh, 4000 degrees Celsius and is one of the hottest flame that can be obtained in a chemical reaction. To obtain cyanogen, you need to use only pure potassium cyanide, which I synthesize by slowly adding acetone cyanohydrin to an alcohol solution of potassium hydroxide. Acetone cyanohydrin in an alkaline environment decomposes into acetone and hydrogen cyanide, so it's important to add acetone cyanohydrin to the alkali, not the other way around, so due to the excess of alkali, all hydrogen cyanide will turn into potassium cyanide. The resulting precipitate is the purest potassium cyanide, unlike other methods, which for example use potassium ferricyanide as a starting material. I filter this precipitate and wash it several times with alcohol and ether. After that, it's necessary to dry it in a vacuum. To dry potassium cyanide, I use an Abderhaldens drying pistol. This is a laboratory device for drying substances in a vacuum. Its peculiarity is that this device allows you to most completely dry solids from the solvent, including the crystallization bound one, which in most cases is not removed when drying substances in air or in a vacuum desiccator. The solid substance, in this case potassium cyanide, to be dried is placed in the inner tube of the device. The retort is filled with a solid desiccant. Here I use silica gel mixed with potassium hydroxide. The inner space of the device is evacuated using a water jet or oil pump. Water is usually poured into the flask and brought to a boil. The resulting vapors condense on the outside of the tube containing the potassium cyanide, heating it and facilitating complete and rapid drying. After all these steps, we have obtained pure dry potassium cyanide, which now only needs to be ground and stored in a glass jar with a tight lid. By the way, this is what a little dose of potassium cyanide, weighing about 150 mg, looks like. If this powder were ground after melting, it would take up much less space. When heated, a solution of potassium cyanide releases ammonia, which can be detected by bringing a piece of paper soaked in phenolphthalein into contact with a gas. Also, a solution of potassium cyanide decolorizes an acidified solution of potassium permanganate. Well, now let's move on to the synthesis of cyanogen. Here I add a concentrated solution of potassium cyanide to silver nitrate. In the right test tube, the concentration of silver nitrate is 10 times higher than in the left one. This reaction produces a very interesting silver salt, silver cyanide. I repeated this reaction in a larger volume by taking a larger amount of potassium cyanide solution and adding it to a larger solution of concentrated silver nitrate to get more silver cyanide. After filtering, washing and drying, I obtained this white silver cyanide powder. When heated, the substance decomposes into pure, dry cyanogen and silver, turning the test tube containing silver cyanide a dirty grey color due to the formation of metallic silver. By the way, if you pass cyanogen through blood, it will turn dark brown, almost black, most likely due to the formation of methemoglobin. The flame of burning cyanogen should have a deep pink color. Let's check it. I replaced the rubber stopper to make it easier to light. And now I'll bring the open flame to the end of the gas outlet tube. Yeah, the color of the flame of burning cyanogen really has a rich pink hue, which, due to the heating of the glass tube, quickly turns orange because of the sodium ions present in the glass. To obtain more cyanogen, I'll use a different reaction. 
This cell will be the interaction of copper sulfate pentahydrate with a concentrated solution of potassium cyanide. In this reaction, the release cyanogen will pass through drying tubes and then combine with oxygen in an autogenous heating torch. After I get stable combustion of a cyanogen-oxygen mixture, I'll bring a tungsten electrode to the flame and we'll see if it can be melted. This is how it will look. So, I open the tap of a dropping funnel and the potassium cyanide solution begins to interact with solid copper sulfate. This immediately produces gas bubbles. This is cyanogen being released. However, I was unable to ignite it. Most likely, with this method of synthesis, all the resulting cyanogen was polymerized before it reached the autogenous torch. Look, the entire drop-in funnel is filled with polymerized cyanogen. It looks like this is a bad method of synthesis. Well, I reassembled the synthesis setup, this time replacing the solid copper sulfate with a solution of copper sulfate. Now, after starting to add the potassium cyanide solution, we have a steady stream of cyanogen being released. To demonstrate this, I attached a small hose to the tip of a torch and lowered the other end into water. The absorbed bubbles can be used to roughly estimate the intensity of the gas being released. It looks good. Now, let's try to ignite the cyanogen. I dimmed the light so that the color of the flame of the burning gas was better visible. Yes, it worked! The cyanogen burns with a rich pink flame, but the flame is too small. To achieve more intense combustion, the intensity of the gas release needs to be increased. To do this, I had to reassemble the setup again. I also connected my ozone machine to the setup, so that the cyanogen would immediately come into contact with the ozonated oxygen resulting in a higher temperature. However, the ozone flow does not yet enter the autogenous torch. First, we will try to ignite only the cyanogen, not the mixture. This time, I placed the copper sulfate solution in a water bath to increase the reaction rate. So, let's start the synthesis. I again add the potassium cyanide solution to the copper sulfate solution and get a very, very good intensity of cyanogen release. Let's ignite it now. Wow, now the flame of cyanogen is really impressive. However, I have not yet been able to achieve stable and sustained combustion. It remains intermittent. Well, it looks like it's time to supply ozonated oxygen to the system. Somehow, I still managed to obtain short-term stable combustion of a mixture of cyanogen and ozonated oxygen. Then I brought the tungsten electrode to the tip of the flame to try to melt it as the temperature of the flame should exceed the melting point of tungsten. This is how it looked like. It looked very promising. In the cyanogen flame, the tip of the tungsten electrode quickly heated up, and after a few seconds, smoke became visible. Since I used a clean, thin tungsten electrode, the smoke consists of tungsten oxide particles, but I still couldn't melt the electrode itself. Perhaps if I had held this electrode in the flame a little longer, it might have melted, but the reaction between potassium cyanide and copper sulfate ended earlier, and I had no more potassium cyanide left. I spent it all on this reaction. Well, after the reaction, the whole funnel was brown black again because of the polymer, mainly pyrocyanogen. So, guys, even though I couldn't melt the tungsten, I think that demonstrating the combustion of cyanogen in azonated oxygen is still a significant achievement. Thanks for watching, and if possible, consider becoming my patron so I can have more reagents and avoid situations where the reaction stops as happened this time 
and to those who are already my patrons, I want to express my deep gratitude for your support and understanding. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave your comments and see you in the next video.